Hello, George Romanich here. Welcome to Fundamentals of Weather and Climate playlist. In today's video, we are going to examine light scattering. In the last video, we saw that if this is the surface of the Earth and here is the top of the atmosphere, the amount of radiation that is reaching the top of the atmosphere is equal solar constant S, approximately 1,367 watts per square meter. And now we need to examine what is happening with this radiation once it enters the Earth's atmosphere. Clearly, one destiny of this light ray can be to not interact with particles in the atmosphere and reach the surface of the Earth. We call that direct radiation. Another light ray might be, for example, absorbed here by a molecule or atom in the Earth's atmosphere, that would be absorption of light and consequently we would have increase of the temperature of the atmosphere. Another light ray that reaches the top of the atmosphere might be deflected by these molecules and atoms and other particles in the atmosphere and it can be deflected once or a few times and then let's say reach the surface. This deflection of light by the particles in the atmosphere is known as scattering. And this is what we will examine in today's video. From the point of view of atmospheric sciences, or at least I should say this playlist on the fundamentals of weather and climate, there are two types of scattering that are important. One is known as Rayleigh scattering and the second one which is much easier to spell is known as Mie scattering. Let us now first examine Rayleigh scattering. To examine Rayleigh scattering we have to remember from my previous videos that light is really a wave and the wave is characterized with the wavelength we call it lambda. And you will remember from previous videos, when we talk about, if we talk about visible light, then a red light has a longer wavelength, namely less energy than the blue and purple uh, light, which have shorter wavelength and higher frequency or higher energy. Now, let's say this light ray is moving from left to right, like so. And let us now say it encounters a particle. And that particle can be, for example, N2 nitrogen or oxygen, O2, in the atmosphere. We know that these two gases represent 99% of the Earth's atmosphere. Let's say that one of these molecules is here. You can see that the size of this molecule is much, much smaller than the wavelength of incoming radiation. So if I say that diameter D is the diameter of this molecule, then you can see that D is much, much smaller than lambda. When this condition is satisfied, we say we are in the regime of Rayleigh scattering of light. Scattering, as I said, is deflection. So how is this particle going to deflect the incoming uh, ray? In the case of Rayleigh scattering, it is equally likely for this light to be scattered forward or backward. So we could say this scatter and this scatter are equally likely. So these arrows should be approximately the same length. And then a little bit to the side is also equally likely. Now, side scattering is possible, but less likely. So if we would plot some sort of a probability of scattering in terms of this dotted line, then you would see that this, what we call forward scattering, and back scattering are equally likely and we also have side scattering which is less likely. It can be demonstrated, although I'm not going to do it in this fundamental playlist, that the sky side scattering 
namely scattering at 90 degree is half as likely as scattering in the forward direction. Now, another important thing that needs to be mentioned here is relationship between scattering and the wavelength. It can be demonstrated that scattering in the uh, Rayleigh regime is proportional, this is the sign for proportional, to the inverse of the wavelength to power 4. This is extremely important. This tells us that short wavelengths, namely blue and purple light in the electromagnetic spectrum, are much more likely to be scattered by these particles than the long wavelengths of visible light, namely yellow and red. So if I was to replicate this figure, but taking into account different colors that are making electromagnetic spectrum, then I should replicate this figure in the following way. Here is the particle that is doing scattering. Blue light has much more chance to be scattered Then red light. Red light has very small probability of being scattered, and purple light, of course, has also a very high probability of being scattered. Now, when you observe this figure, perhaps you can already conclude that if this is what is happening in our atmosphere, and this is what is happening in our atmosphere, it is not surprising that the sky is blue because blue and purple colors predominantly scatter off of these small particles of uh, namely molecules of air you might say then why is sky not purple there are mainly two reasons you will rem reason number one you will remember from my video on the electromagnetic spectrum of solar radiation that the sun emits less energy in the purple part of the spectrum than in the blue part of the spectrum. So there is much more blue light reaching the atmosphere from the sun than purple light. And reason number two is that research has shown that our eyes are much less susceptible to purple color than the blue color. But I will have a separate video on the uh, color of the sky. Why is it blue? Why is it sometimes red? Why are clouds white, yet sometimes dark. That will be a separate video. But you can see we uh, provided fundamentals over here, and the fact that the sky is blue is due to Rayleigh scattering. Okay, now what would be then the business of this Mia, sc Mia scattering? Well, if we again consider this light moving from left to right, but let's assume this time it is interacting with this particle. And you can see that diameter of this particle is now similar to the wavelength of the incoming light. In other words, you can conclude, therefore, that Mia scattering is the dominant regime of scattering when the size of the particle is similar to the wavelength of incoming light. The question is, how is scattering pattern in this regime? Well, forward scattering dominates. Side scattering is again very weak. Back scattering is a little bit stronger than the side scattering, but not as strong as forward scattering. So maybe like this. So if we were to plot again that probability of scattering in terms of some sort of a circle, it would get something like this perhaps. You can find better figures, of course, online. Uh, but you get the point. And the skewness of this figure towards that side should be much larger. So this should go beyond this uh, whiteboard.
So in near scattering, forward dominates all other directions. As the size of this particle increases with respect to the wavelength of this light, forward scattering keeps increasing as well. Near scattering is very important when we have small particles of dust, dirt, or anything else in the atmosphere, because these particles predominantly scatter in the regime of near scattering. Furthermore, very small particles of water, for example, in fog and mist, uh, scatter in the near regime. Now, how is this scattering related to wavelength, namely color of light? Well, in the case of near scattering, all colors are equally likely to be scattered. So if here is this particle that is doing scattering, then blue, yellow, green, purple, let's say more yellow, red, blue, blue, and so on. So there is no dependency basically on the color. And now you also understand why fog, for example, is white. Because all colors are equally likely to be scattered. And you know from high school or elementary school that combination of all colors is white color. Namely, white is basically therefore not a color, it's a combination of all colors, just like black is not color, it's the absence of light. The so, mere scattering usually produces final result that is white color, so you can also conclude that one of the reasons clouds, or at least some of the clouds, are white is also associated with mere scattering, but as I said, we will discuss that in more details in one of the next videos. So, in today's video, we covered this scattering of light. In the next video, we are going to look into this light that directly passes through the atmosphere without interacting with molecules and atoms and reaches the Earth's surface. That's called direct light and we will define something called irradiance. Until then, goodbye.